somewhere in the Australian outback. Something changed. Witnesses report impossible sightings. Animals that simply don't belong on this continent. The world's fastest predator in the planet's most fragile ecosystem. How did this happen? And can we still stop what comes next? October 2024. Reports begin circulating in the Queensland interior. Golden fur with black spots. Slender body. Supernatural speed. John McKenzie, a third-generation farmer, swore he saw something that defied logic. I was checking the cattle when I saw a golden blur across the field. The speed. Good God, I've never seen anything move like that. Initially dismissed as heat illusions in the 113 degree Fahrenheit desert, but then evidence accumulated. Tracks with four toes without retractable claw marks. Trail cameras captured the impossible. A cheetah, the fastest land mammal on Earth, capable of reaching over 62 miles per hour, now operating on Australian territory. But how? Illegal trafficking? Escape from an unregistered facility? Authorities had no answers. Only a growing problem. The cheetah is biological engineering optimized for one function, absolute speed. Slender body weighing between 88 and 143 pounds. Flexible spine working like a spring. Semi-retractable claws like an Olympic runner's spikes. In three seconds, it accelerates from 0 to 62 miles per hour. Faster than most sports cars. At full speed, all four paws suspend in the air. Controlled leaps of up to 23 feet. But this perfect machine has a devastating price. Its pursuit lasts only 20 to 30 seconds before the body dangerously overheats to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. It needs 30 minutes to recover. In Africa, lions, leopards, and hyenas constantly steal their prey. Cheetahs lose up to 50% of their kills. The cheetah avoids confrontations. Its body was built for speed, not fighting. Now imagine this predator in a new environment. No lions. No hyenas. No leopards. Its success rate could skyrocket from 50% to 70, maybe 80%. Australia has its own apex predators. Dingoes, wild dogs that hunt in packs of 10 to 12 individuals with lethal coordination. They hunt everything from rabbits to buffalo, weighing 1,760 pounds. The encounter would be inevitable. A cheetah kills with surgical precision, but then comes vulnerability. Exhausted, overheated, heart beating at 150 beats per minute, a pack of dingoes approaches. Dingoes can detect fresh blood from miles away. They wouldn't hesitate to steal the prey. Experienced adults could escape with superior speed. But cubs? Juveniles? They would become the prey. Saltwater crocodiles, over 16 feet long with bite force three times stronger than a lion's, lurk on riverbanks. A thirsty cheetah approaching water would have no chance. Giant pythons reaching 16 feet wait in ambush. A large python could easily overpower a young or injured cheetah. But if cheetahs survived the competitors, the real nightmare would begin for native wildlife. Australia harbors creatures that evolved in isolation for millions of years. Marsupials that never faced a high-speed pursuit hunter. Wallabies, bandicoots, small kangaroos, completely unprepared for daytime pursuit tactics. Red-necked wallabies weighing 33 to 55 pounds. Maximum speed of only 25 miles per hour. For a cheetah, disproportionately easy. Long-nosed bandicoots foraging during the day. Perfect prey for young cheetahs learning to hunt. And here's the devastating problem. Many of these species are already threatened. Some exist only in isolated pockets. A cheetah population in one of these areas. Local extinction in months. European rabbits, a devastating pest with 200 million individuals. Ironically, cheetahs could help control this problem. Red foxes and feral cats, responsible for killing 2 billion native animals per year. 
cheetahs would add additional pressure on species already in terminal decline. The introduction of a new predatory species isn't an abstract experiment. It's an ecological bomb. Australia already knows this story. European rabbits, introduced in 1859, devastated native vegetation in less than 50 years. Cane toads, brought in 1935 to control beetles, poisoned native predators. Quals, goannas, snakes, thousands died eating these toxic amphibians. The beetles continued destroying plantations. The toad failed and created disaster. Red foxes decimated small marsupials. More than 20 mammal species extinct since then. Feral cats are now Australia's deadliest predator. They kill 1.5 billion native animals per year. Every. Alone. Year. Each invasion left permanent scars that never healed. Scientists warn. The Australian ecosystem is already on the brink of collapse. Climate change causing prolonged droughts and intense fires. Deforestation eliminating habitat. Invasive species competing non-stop. The addition of one more specialized predator would be the final push into the abyss. But here's the truth you need to know. All of this is a hypothetical analysis. There are no cheetahs established in the Australian wilderness. No breeding populations. No confirmed sightings. The cameras, the tracks, the farmer reports. Fiction created for this script. But the scenario we described is real, is scientifically grounded, is frighteningly plausible. Conservation scientists have already discussed introducing large predators in Australia as part of rewilding programs. And the risks we detailed are real, are calculated in ecological models. The question isn't, what if this happened? The question is, what if someone decides it should happen? Because throughout human history, we've deliberately introduced species dozens of times. And almost always, it went wrong. Nature doesn't ask permission. And knowledge is our only defense against catastrophic decisions. What do you think would happen? Leave your opinion in the comments. And subscribe to understand more about how species introduction can change entire ecosystems.